So this week it's, uh, it's just the two of us. <laughs> That's right. Sadly, we can't find Logan. Yeah. But uh, Logan, Logan took a trip upstate and he just uh, didn't come back. Nah. And I sure hope he comes back soon. Yeah. What? What? Is that? Is that Logan? Is that I thought I saw. It's Logan, Whoa! everyone! Oh, oh my goodness, I'm here. What an entrance. Nice. There's a whole crossover thing. <laughs> we don't have to start like this, but we could. I like it. Like I, could. This. I, think it's I cool. mean, yeah. even though, you know what? Happy New Year, guys. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Happy freaking New Year. It is 2022. Yeah. No, oh, no, 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 hey. no, 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 if we're talking wow. about 2021, you know, but like 2022, we kind of go into it with some hope. Yeah, where's like, the soundboard? Cha-ching! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Hooray! Kids celebrating at a birthday party sound. We were talking about having a soundboard for the podcast, <laughs> and I was like, that would be a horrible idea. I'm down with it. <laughs> Me too. If someone gets a soundboard. I knew you'd be down with it. Auga! I was like, <laughs> like Jeremy will hit that board every three seconds. The first podcast we have, it'll just be... <laughs> I just didn't like this actor in this movie. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Straight face. Tell us more. Tell us why. <laughs> uh, what are some intentions that we want to set towards the new year? Are we, are we going into New Year's resolutions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just really quick. Right off like, the bat. What's one for each of us? Haven't even introduced ourselves, but that's fine. Yeah. Uh, cold open is nice sometimes. Yeah. We'll introduce our intentions, you know? Yeah. Let, us, let them know the characters before they know our names. I feel like we, we've talked about the fact that we have kind of a similar one but it's phrased in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, mine is, do less things that make me momentarily happy and more things that make me long-term happy. Mm -hmm. So doing less things long -term that... Long-term thinking. Yeah, in the moment that I'm like, oh, I want to scroll TikTok for like a half hour. And then like, I get to the end of that half hour and I'm like, well, I just wasted half an hour on TikTok mm -hmm. when I could have watched like a 30-minute show or like, especially on the bad days when it's like, I've been in bed scrolling insta tiktok twitter for two hours oh, it's like, I know oh those look days. at that that was a full movie that was an entire motion right. picture that i could have watched and instead i watched six second videos for the last two hours and i need to not do that so my intention is more long-term happiness less short-term happiness love that i love that Tastes good. good i want to make the special moments that much more special this Ooh. year i feel like some special moments happened in 2020 and 2021 that I didn't really treat as special because of, you know, we're going through a pandemic. Maybe we are toning things down, okay. you know, so that we don't go too far all out and accidentally overdo it, you know. But this year I want to try to really put in the effort to make those days that are supposed to feel special, really feel special, you know? Do you ever yeah. have a special day yeah. and, or like a holiday and you're on Instagram after and you're looking at everyone else treating it so different than you My did? My last birthday felt so much like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. That it was just like, I really like waited till the last minute on this because I'd like, I knew most of my friends were busy and it was like, this is gonna suck. And then I got to the end of it and I was like, it was fun because I had some great people there, but there was definitely that feeling of like, and I tried a little harder, I probably could have made this just that much more mm. special like you're saying so that's where i'm at i mean i i really like it came to me on new year's day when i was like what am i doing this new year's though i'm like inside you know yeah. i'm with like a small group i'm i'm you know celebrating in my own way but like i didn't dress up i didn't go out anywhere even though i could have technically i mean it wasn't like you think about going out on new year's in the age of covid and you're like uh, maybe about, not the best idea, I think but about like going out for New Year's, and I'm just like not the best idea. I right, just don't want to deal with the crowds. COVID aside, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I've never been a Times Square kind of guy. Please no. I'm no, like, no. Real I'm, New Yorkers I'm, are not Times Square people. I'm the kind know. of guy that will turn on whatever the show, like if it's New Year's Rock and Eve or whatever, like three minutes before the ball drops, yeah. and then turn back to whatever I was actually. Exactly. Watching. We definitely have that on all night. I had it on for the last hour. I watched, like, Anderson and Andy, but I just can't do... I can't... CNN has gotten even worse with, like, let's just get everyone as drunk as possible. Oh, Andy possible. was tossed. Andy Yo. was Andy not, was and not, The not. way he was talking about de Blasio. <laughs> We've all been thinking it. Um, Andy was tossed. Don Lemon was tossed. Uh, Anderson was pretty 
sauce. Yeah, it's the it's the one time a year where these like very like professional business suits talking about politics and news get to like, hey, we're also Let's real. Let loose. We're also real people who love alcohol. Yeah, I don't think about Andy Cohen like that. No, yeah, I no, but no. I think of Andy Cohen like that. Like a talking head. Oh no no no! Like like. Let's let loose. Yeah, yeah. Like, let's let loose. Yeah. You're talking like Anderson, Don yeah, Lemon, Anderson, Don. like okay. them. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I like that. It's a really good, that's a really like good yeah. decision. Thank like you. The, when you said it, it made me think about like Halloween, that you were kind of trying to do something that I, and I, I was a part of that, of yeah. being like, ah. Yeah. Yeah. So no. yeah, I like that intention. That's good. Yeah. Um, I have a few different ones. Like Logan said, ours is kind of similar. Uh, I phrase it differently, but I'm just going to say a different one. Uh, and just, it's just, just going to be to read more books. Oh, nice. Love that. I want to read more books. I have, you know, I'm worried too much about my, my video game and my movie backlog, and I, I have some, some solid books that I I want to read, and I want to find some, like, new fiction and yeah, stuff think, like that. I just lent know? Logan a book if you want to read it. I mean... And I want you to read Ready Player One, because I think you really <sighs> oh, like it. Oh, lend it to me. It's right there. All right. Yeah. Get yeah. To right after. I, especially in my last trip to Barnes & Noble, I was really feeling the, like, there's so many books, and I haven't heard of, like any mm -hmm. of them so i don't know if they're good or bad yeah that's the thing yeah. it's like you want to catch up on old things that you feel like you should have read by now and books don't really come with like a trailer like movies tv shows video blurb. games there's a you cover got a blurb there's and a, a cover and a blurb and it's like and maybe yeah. a book review if you've looked it up mm -hmm. but like if i want to watch a tv show i can be like all right what's the tone who are the actors what am i generally gonna get with a book it's like you pick it up and you're like okay, okay. Uh, I guess that's, that's what the story is about. I feel like that's kind of the the magic that we are just like our generation is like kind of like might be missing out on that feeling of just being like, what is this? Let me this yeah, let, let me find out by myself. Let me take, let me the take time. it home and read it just because I like the cover of it because it's mm. pretty. Yeah, yeah. Or like I know this this writer wrote something that I liked before and I hadn't heard of this one, but mm. let me check it out. Like I remember. When I used to read like Rick Riordan and flipping to the front and being like other works by Rick Riordan. I don't know. Any, any of these. Yeah, I got, yeah. He's got another series and that's how I started a different series. Yeah. Mm. I like these. Yeah, I have to add both of these to my list. Speaking of making those special moments a bit more special, we are back, baby! Great transition. Okay. Pat Cass is back. This is episode 46. Woo! And I'm still Jeremy Van Suarez. I'm still Jacob Wade. I'm still Logan Riley Bruner. And as always, we still have some housekeeping to do. Just because we were on a break doesn't mean we were doing nothing. That's Logan, right. take it away. Oh yeah, because I'm in the hot seat this week. Mm -hmm. In terms of housekeeping this week, we should have an interview coming out tomorrow, barring my uh, editing abilities suddenly falling apart. But we should have, excuse me, we should have a new interview coming out tomorrow. Cool. Uh, very excited about that. I'm not going to say who's with because uh, I like to keep the people excited. But keep an eye on our Instagram, because you will see uh, over there. Uh, we're working on new covers. We're working on a new uh, short film that we've been kind of kicking around a little bit. So yeah. I'm excited about that. Um, if you watched the podcast that Jeremy was not involved in... Uh, there was a bunch of them. We're working with uh, <laughs> collective member Susanna Scorcia on her series Rekindling. Uh, that's been getting a lot of work we did a full read through with the cast we did a. Uh, it was awesome it sounded so good it was so fun jacob yeah. and me have been just pitching ideas at each other about how we want to do it and there have been some jacob jacob made a really interesting pitch the other day that mm. if it if keep this moment in mind because if i come back like seven podcasts from now and i'm like hey jacob we're doing the thing we said we were gonna do Dang. this is when i was born um other than that we're we're trying to be as creative as possible um working with some good collective members on some cool new stuff mm -hmm. and just really isn't 2022 is the year to like i think solidify black wolves 2020 and 2021 were like let's get started let's, let's get like, on our feet build yeah. a foundation start getting moving learn and to now, walk <laughs> 2022 feels like the year that like we've been walking for a little bit let's let's maybe start running a little yeah. bit light jog at yeah. least yeah let's get a little light jog warm let's up maybe do some, do some new interesting <sighs> stuff i'm very excited there's some cool stuff coming that i'm very that I'm really excited to share. Wow, I've been off from the podcast so long, my words are just not working. Heavy, 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 the teeth, the tip of the tongue. Um, <laughs> in terms of housekeeping, that's about it. Uh, yeah, it's an exciting time. We're excited for what's to come. I can't wait to share it with you all. So stay tuned. Awesome. To catch you guys up just a little bit on what you may have missed, we did get a chance to see Spider-Man No Way Home. Yes, Woo-wee! 
Yes, we did. We won't be talking about it today on the podcast because we okay. don't want to spoil it for anyone. And we're also trying to keep the spoilers as their own videos. So yeah, this is something we talked about last year. Right. Uh, spoiler casts are officially becoming their own thing. Yeah. Uh, so now we get to talk about Dune for two hours, baby. <laughs> <laughs> We've discovered, and I'm sure you all have, that sometimes you turn on an episode of the Black Wolf Pack cast and you're like, well, I haven't seen this movie and... I don't want to skip through. I don't want to skip through half that the great podcast. Banter. I guess I'm not listening to the rest of this one. <sighs> Turn it off. So we don't want you to have to do that. So from here on out, we're going to keep our spoiler cast to their own videos. They will be coming soon. We'll keep you posted on when we're recording. We'll probably bring in more guests for our spoiler yes. cast. Oh, yeah, we know friends to. who have watched Spider-Man in particular. Um, but for the most part, we're going to try and keep any movie reviews we do on the podcast short, Light, sweet, spoiler and free. spoiler free. Yeah. Exactly. So do not worry from here on out. If you hear us talking about a movie, uh, we're going to be keeping it spoiler free and there will probably be a spoiler cast if we like it. So, uh, let us know if there's any movies that we talk about that we haven't said we're doing a spoiler cast on. If you want to hear our thoughts about it, we'd love to put out like a half hour, hour video about how much we love cinema because totally. we can talk about it for a long time. Yeah. Speaking of Spider-Man. Yeah. Speaking of Spider-Man. It's been quite some time since we saw it. Mm -hmm. uh, but just saying the name just brings back great emotions. It's a great movie. From what I from from that movie. Yeah, if you haven't movie. seen Spider-Man, uh, you're missing out on an event. If you haven't seen Spider-Man because you're behind on the MCU, uh, I'm sorry. It's going to take you a while to catch up, and you kind of have to. Uh, if you want to watch go it. see it who cares just go see it you're gonna you're gonna feel happy about it whether you know <laughs> everything or you know nothing I feel like you're gonna be real confused <laughs> if I went into that movie no background I would be so confused I want to say why but we can't <laughs> nah, I it was why, good I want to say why I believe against that but it's okay it was my favorite of all the Spider-Man movies all of them yeah. ever I think so I think wow. I can agree with that. I think I can solidly agree with that. It was very good. That's where I'll leave it at Do we, do we want to do a spoiler-free verdict just to... Oh, out of 10? Yeah. yeah. 8.5 for me. 9 for me. Wow. For me. Well, okay. All right. 8.59. 8. A general 8.5, I guess. Yeah, that's a nice average. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm, I'm much like... An, People probably won't get this reference. I'm a lot like Angry Joe when it comes to my reviews. Eight means it was great. It means it was really solid. IGN thinks eight is great as well. Yeah. Mm, that's why they rhyme. Eight and great. But <laughs> I, I feel like sometimes people are like, an eight, did you not Whoa. like it? Like, no, it was great. It was yeah. great. It's just there's some things that I didn't like. And that's fine. Just two things. Yeah. <laughs> I thought two was, points there, worth. There was one and a half for me. <laughs> That's right. those. Yes, Spider Man's really... great. Tom Holland is so good in that part, and and he I signed just... on for another three movies. Is he? I yes. haven't heard this. Uh, he is. I think it's in talks. In talks. I think, I think it's, it's official in talks. Are we? Was... All right. Research Let's get our producer. <laughs> producer on the line. Hello. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe I'll... I should know. Nah, come on, man. Signed on. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. What's the verdict? Mm -hmm. okay, well. There are plans to bring back Holland. Says... He's not signed. No. Says producer. That's all producer says. They want to he... sign him for a couple more movies. We'll see if he actually... Oh, yeah, he has. He it? said on the red carpet, he said, if, he said, they're like my mom and dad, and if they'll have me, I'll be happy to be back. I feel like if Marvel and Sony red, can red come, red carpet is a hard place to yeah. get asked that. If question. Marvel yeah. and Sony can come to an, another agreement, which they should, because look at all the money it's getting you. Let's let's be have... real. Let's be real. If Disney uh, can give Sony the money they deserve, then we can have a couple more movies. I feel like there always ends up being this argument of like Sony's trying to keep Spider Man from the MCU, and it's like no, they're not. No, they, they, own, they, they, they have the rights. They own Spider-Man. Yeah. They want to get paid what they're owed, and they have every right to that because it's their character. And to say, like, Sony's the bad guy for it, I think is Disney propaganda. Yeah, it's not fair. Yeah. It's not so, fair. I want to I wanna call out what needs to be called out. I love Disney a lot. Yeah. They are a multi... 
faceted corporation that I would like to work for at some point. <laughs> okay, what else? What else? We all saw The Tragedy of Macbeth. That's oh, right. Yes, we now, that's a movie we can kind of go into a bit more of nauseam because, you know, Macbeth is... Everyone knows the story. Centuries old. We'll talk about a couple details. I don't want to get bogged down too long, no, but... No, no. We, won't, we won't spoil it, but let's... Discuss. Let's discuss. Yes. First of all, I th loved Denzel Washington yes. and Frances McDormand. Yeah, great movie. performances, yes. And I want her name. Who plays the witch. Oh, yes. Looking yeah. her up yeah. right now. While Jacob looks that up, I want to compliment uh, Joel Cohen on his oh, incredible directing. That was like art direction, cinematography, Set direction, cinematography, filming aesthetic, the whole thing in black and white, costumes, the aspect ratio. It was, it was beautiful. It was honestly really, really good. Catherine Hunter played the witches, and my gosh, amazing performance. Something like it this way. Guys. Yeah, it's I, one of the first times I've seen all witches played by one character. Really cool. Really dug it. Really cool. Really I really loved what was done with reflections in this movie. Yes. I loved what was done with perspective of camera in this movie. Yes. I loved what um, was done with set pieces, gorgeous all around, scenic mm, design. So theatrical. It, like, felt, it, it felt like a stage production. It felt almost. very old Hollywood. It felt very old Hollywood in the way that, like, now is, like, we can polish it in a way that they couldn't. Realism. Mm -hmm. yeah. This felt very much like fantasticalism. Almost. Yeah, it was really cool. Like, we were supposed to think Surrealism. it was a castle, but know that it wasn't an actual castle. Right. There was never a moment that they were like, no, this is a real castle. It was like, no, no this is clearly a set. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to try and trick you. It's a set. Yeah. I loved the use of geometry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I loved the, um, the I sound loved design. Harry Melling's acting as Malcolm. Very strong. Yes. I wanted to shout out, uh, Corey Hawkins as Macduff. Yes. And Who plays Duncan? Duncan is played by Brendan Gleeson. Matt oh, I to that yes. Matt I was so good in it. So many Matt Harry, I. Moody was so good. <laughs> so many Harry Potter alum in this movie. Yeah. And that's so cool. Very cool. Um, I loved like the use of geometry in like yeah. light design mm -hmm. and set design and how they like were married through the camera. Like, I love how the sound design like all, like gave us that feeling of like a like stage, like a theater. Yes. Like, it's like, this, you know, it starts and it's all, like, black and there's nothing on screen and I'm kind of uncomfortable because I'm in a movie theater mm -hmm. and it's super dark and there should be something on the screen. Yeah. And then it's, like, all white and you hear, like, that, like, ka chunk of, like, sp a spotlight turning on. And yeah. I'm like, wow, like, I'm... It's a tragedy. I'm yeah. at the theater right now. Yeah. I'm seeing a tragedy. Yeah, right. and even though it's a tragedy, I find I found myself laughing at some points. I was surprised... It's humorous. I was surprised by some of the comedy that was in... I mean, this. Joel Cohen has always been so good. And at I think, and I think humor. it's because of of Cohen's style. You know, like Fargo is very like dry, dry humor. I and mean, I, I like... really point to like Inside You and Davis, that like Ballad of Buster Scruggs, the idea mm -hmm. of like let's get something really dark and make it humorous, mm -hmm. but like still live in that like real painful like dark place absolutely yeah and it just it makes it even better when uh like that the audience you can kind of get on the audience's like vulnerable side and that they can laugh with this character even though they know what they're signing up for when the movie is called the tragedy of Macbeth. yeah like it, it felt good to like be able to like let out a little laugh even though i was like even though I know that everyone's gonna die in the end, but like this, this, this moment, this moment's kind of funny, and I haven't seen it this way before. So big props Bravo. to Cohen and Washington and McDormand. I liked really great film overall. I liked how practical it was. Mm -hmm. Like not a lot of CG. Not a lot of CG, oh, yeah. and when it was, it was so tastefully and charmingly done. Mm -hmm. um, I loved all of the insanity. And the way that it's conveyed through acting and camera. camera. Yeah. I wish some of the uh, the characters did a little bit more uh, character work. I you feel know, like the difficulty points... with doing Shakespeare on film is that Shakespeare requires such text yeah. work. There were points where I just felt like some of the actors were just like reading a script. And then there were other times where I was like... You know what you're talking about. You've and done Shakespeare. I, and I believe what you're saying. And even though you're like 
this thine thinning doth doffing me, I, I, I'm I right there with you, bro. I'm yeah, gonna, kill the king. Brendan Gleeson in particular, I think, knew the text like the back of his hand and right. like knew exactly what he was saying and exactly what it all meant. And every time he was on screen, I couldn't take my eyes off him. So yeah. it was very good. Yeah. That's how I felt about Ben Cook when we were watching West Side, Side Story. Story. Is yeah. that I, every shot, I couldn't take my eyes off him. Yeah, I agree. Genius. Any of the verdict for Tragedy and Macbeth? Uh, in hindsight, having taken a step back and seen the whole thing, uh, I think I have to give it a 7.5 out of 10. I was going to give it the same. I was going to give it the same. 7.5. They, they saw it like a week or two last a week. week? One week, oh, week before. And I it. saw it yesterday. Yeah. So... 7.5. Yeah, I think there's some really brilliant Shakespeare coming back. I think Shakespeare on film is something that I'm super interested in seeing more of. Mm -hmm. uh, the BBC has a really beautiful series called The Hollow Crown, where they do Henry V all the way through Richard III. Oh, oh yes, God. I With remember hearing about this cast. in one of my, oh my, one of my so theater classes. Henry IV, <laughs> part one, two. Henry V, no, it's Richard II, Henry IV, one, two. Henry V, one, two. Henry VI, one, two, three. Richard III. My God. Yeah. Wow. Ugh. I can't imagine <laughs> trying to shoot. I mean, British actors are brilliant and, like, can I would have love that. Yeah, I would have so much fun, but it would yeah. be brutal to actually make. I know. Um, but yeah, there's some really good stuff coming out. Uh, I love it. I love it all. Speaking of uh, British actors. <laughs> oh, yeah? Great job. Great job, buddy. <laughs> Woo! We're, we're on with the segues today. Uh, you two got yeah. to see the... 20th anniversary reunion special of Harry Potter. We Tell did. me about it. I didn't get a chance to see it. It was delightful. It's so emotional in the best way possible. Yes. It gives closure to any fan who didn't know what was going on behind the scenes. Mm. For me. Okay. <laughs> like any uh, rumors that may have been in the on, air. But they let slide okay that's fair that's fair there's some stuff that they don't want to talk about yeah oh yeah they definitely touched on the stuff that they were like, the like in we the room, should say you know? i mean that yeah. it was the, tastefully some done. actors had a hard time during the last couple movies in their personal lives and mm. they really didn't address that at all mm. thank you they kind of just like yeah. brushed straight past it yeah which it's a reunion special they want to stick to the light and stay respectful yeah so it was nice to to see them do that uh, and not kind of force anybody to talk about things that they didn't want to talk about. Please, it was nice. Talk, open up your wounds again. <laughs> yeah, it was nice seeing the cast get a reunion. Yeah, and um, it was interesting to see who they paired up for certain scenes. Um, they certain they didn't moments. do it like a panel. They did it like a, three at a time. Yeah, it's like just intimate conversations. Let's get Daniel Radcliffe and Helena Bonham Carter. Nice. On the set, let's and let's get Gary Oldman and Helena Bonham Carter. Let's get Gary Oldman and Dan. Let's, let's get Dan get, with all the directors. And... Let's get Emma with Rupert. Let's get Emma with Hagrid. Let's yeah. get, or I should say, uh, Robbie Coltrane. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. he has a quote in the special that I saw today that almost made me cry yeah. again, uh, where he says, uh, he says, I might not be around in these, 50 yeah, years. Yeah, these movies are going to live on long after. My kids' kids will be watching Harry Potter in 50 years, and I won't be around, but Hagrid will. Wow. And it yeah. was like, oh my gosh, that's fucking heartbreaking. Because you, they go through all the people that have passed away in the years since they've made it. And it's a surprising list. Mm. So many people have passed away. Yeah. And, and some of them quite young. Yeah. So... Yeah, it was really nice to get to see. It was cool to see all of them talk about the process and talk about, particularly for me, the directors, hearing how they approach these films and how they really the approach genius. them yeah. as was, actors. Was Alfonso there? Yeah. Yes. And he talks about like the homework assignment that he gave to them that's kind of become a famous meme uh, and just like his process in approaching the movie and how he really wanted to treat them like teenagers and like they were a part of the team. Yeah. He wasn't going to hold their hands and like let them futz around like Chris Columbus did. He was really going to expect them to show up and do the work and they had gotten to the age that they were ready for that. And it was really cool to see. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. There was also the, like, there's just, it's been so long 
since the last movie came out that like I feel like so much behind the scenes has already been circulating the web and like I feel like I knew a lot of the behind the scenes tidbits that they shared in the special. It was nice however to see like intimate moments that are fresh between these familiar faces and like see how they interact and how they reminisce together and like, sure. not so much about what happened back then but like where they are now and how they feel about it. I do like going off that point that a lot of the like rumors like things that we kind of always knew that like they had a hard time adjusting to fame were like finally addressed that it was like getting to actually hear in their own words what they were going through rather than like oh we kind of know that emma is having a really hard time because she's the only girl of the trio and she's dealing with all the creepy gross men around the world but she's emma it's fine and then right. to, like, hear in her words, like, no, I felt like I was completely alone and, like, didn't want to act anymore. And well. It was, yeah. It was, it was, t and I can't, I can't even imagine dealing with the kind of pressure that they were under. Yeah. At Such 16, a young age. 17, yeah. Having, like, in particular Emma Watson, having people, like, count down to your 18th birthday yeah. because they want to sexualize you is really uncomfortable. And to have the two people that are kind of supposed to be or like side by side really kind of get taken away because it's like, oh yeah, we need to keep Harry and Rupert together because they're, we need to keep Dan and Rupert because they're Harry and Ron. Uh, and we need to keep Emma as her own thing because she's Emma. Mm. And it's like... Well, I, I don't know if I got that specific vibe. I mean, she talks about the fact that she's like, it was you two and me. And you guys I'm had gonna have other. to rewatch it. I'm gonna have to rewatch that. Because she really didn't. All the press I remember was like Harry and Ron, Harry and Ron, and Hermione. Especially toward the later movies. I disagree. But okay. okay. Like in promotional stuff. Yeah. In terms of when they were hyping the movie, a lot of the press interviews were like, "We're gonna keep Dan and Rupert." And we're gonna keep Emma, and sometimes I don't feel like I don't feel yeah, I, I don't yeah. have a, like I remember feeling like she was becoming more important because she was becoming like more of a romantic interest plot point in the movies, which is like is a problem in its own right. But I do remember like I don't know. I have to watch it in general. Yeah, you know, you know? I want to rewatch that reunion and, and look for that that moment. Yeah, she talks about it. I remember Tom talking about it. Tom talks about it way earlier when okay. he's like talking about their relationship, but Emma talks about it being a oh. really tough point for her. Yeah, I gotta rewatch it. And but yeah, as a New Yorker, I remember when she came to Brown in the city and just she Brown. Brown's not in New, New York, York, so fuck that. Start of that sentence. Uh, <laughs> hi, Jeremy. You can cut back in here. <laughs> hi, Jeremy. Um, as someone who, here. as someone who was a Harry Potter fan at the time, hearing about her experiences at Brown and how her life really didn't escape Harry Potter when she left the movies, um, I remember hearing stories about, like, her going to class and people, like, yelling out five points for Gryffindor every time she answered a question. Which I bet would get old. Like, it's a, you get it. You get the joke <laughs> as, like... Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's such a stupid thing. <laughs> like, it is, and, like, you, I feel like the it's first... It's like, ha ha, I get it, I get it, and then after a point of it, it's like, shut up. Yeah. I like, mean, not even after a point, like, ten years of your life are devoted to this movie, and then you're like, I just want to go to college and be a regular person, and every single class you show up to, people are like, you're not a regular person! It's like, please just leave the girl alone. Mm, Let her live will do a normal that. life. Yeah, it's awful. I hate it. I hate it. <sighs> celebrity culture. Anyway. The movie was good. The special was great. Loved it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm out of good segues. I don't know how we segue from here. Mm. Well, Logan, we, you can, we can stop talking about movies we've already seen in the past and we can start talking about movies that are coming out this week. Look at that. There you go. Thanks, Fred. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Y'all <laughs> know the drill. It's movies of the week. Cha-ching! <laughs> 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 Um, Damn, son, where'd you find this? So I tried to keep as ahead of the movies as we could before we went on hiatus. I missed a couple. 
Uh, so I got there's a couple. There's there's some stuff that I have to talk about that's already come out and stuff that's coming out. So for our audience, yeah, let me if, get comfy. If you're able, I would strongly recommend that you switch the podcast from regular speed to double speed. Now talk in slow motion. This is going to be a long <laughs> section. So uh, I'm going to try and get through these as tight as clean as tight and as clean as possible. I'm already Example fucking a. up. I'm already fucking it Take up. Take your time. Yeah, it's on double speed anyway. <laughs> it's on double yeah. speed. They're, they're going back. <laughs> First up, uh, released at the very beginning of the year, is The 355, an action spy thriller from director Simon Kinberg, who wrote, who wrote alongside Beck Smith and Teresa Rebeck, who I know because of collective member Michael Jorge. Uh, he loves her play The Understudy, which I have gotten to read. I think she's a really good writer. If you love spy thrillers like Charlie's Angel or The Old Guard, which I was really into, uh, this looks like your cup of tea. Diane Kruger, Penelope Cruz, Jessica Chastain, Lupita Nyong'o, Bing Bing Fan, go watch women kick ass. I am so excited for women team-up movies. I'm Same. so into it. Like, action spy thriller movies aren't necessarily my cup of tea, but you know what? If it's not just a bunch of dudes doing it and instead I can get a different variety of it, I'll watch it. I'm into it. Yeah. All right, next up, the winner of the Grand Prix at Cannes International Film Festival and Iran's official selection for Best International Feature at the Academy Awards. A Hero, directed and written by Iranian filmmaker Asghar Fahadi, follows Rahim as he tries to repay a debt that landed him in prison. An intense look at what makes a hero a hero. The trailer gives very little away, but I am super intrigued and looking forward to checking it out when it makes the jump to Amazon Prime, because it is a prize movie. Wow. So we're going to get it in a couple weeks. But if you can see it in theaters, I'd recommend going to see it in theaters. It looks like a really good story. It looks really, really intense. So super into that. Uh, from drama to horror, we go with Japanese-Canadian director Randall Okita. Uh, See For Me stars Skylar Davenport, a non-binary blind actor playing oh. Sophie, a blind former skier who's cat-sitting a mansion in the mountains. Using a FaceTime-like app that can connect her with a virtual assistant, she has to survive three thieves breaking into her house. This looks exciting, intense, and definitely worth checking out. It gave me very Hush vibes, except instead of the actress not being deaf and playing a deaf character, we have an actual blind actress playing a blind character. I think that's very, very cool. interesting, yeah. very cool. Um, and Skylar Davenport, non-binary actors getting leading parts. Yes! Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, in the same horror thriller vein, we have King Carr from Brazilian director Renata Pinheiro. Yes? Did I get that right? Do you know? I don't know Portuguese. Uh, Brazilian, okay. No. <laughs> Continue, just Thanks. stop. Stop on your head. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd say Pinheiro. Renata Pinheiro. Okay. About a boy who gains the ability to talk to cars. Uh, it shares wow. a somewhat Christine vibe, the Stephen King book. Uh, this film looks absolutely beautiful, and like it might attempt to be more than just a car-killing slasher. It looks it looks worth a look for sure. Um, I'm interested in it. Uh, car talking movies, Ghost Rider, Christine. It's always kind of an odd genre I don't for think me. The car talks in Ghost. Sorry, Rider. not Ghost Rider. Uh, cars. No, there's another. There's another movie that's like. Guy gets in car and becomes vigilante. I'm totally oh, forgetting. Oh, Knight Rider. Knight Rider. Knight Rider. Yeah. There we go. Um, there's yeah. also there's also that movie Rubber about the sentient uh, car tire that starts killing everyone. I auditioned for a movie that was about a car that becomes sentient and kills people. So it's it's was a it theme. King Car. It's a theme. It was not King Car. Oh, it could have uh, been. It's a theme. Okay. It is a theme. Might have been Dishonored a different name. Yeah. Prince Chevrolet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last of the ones that I missed, uh, and then on to the ones coming out. Uh, June again from Australian director J.J. Winlove it is the story of June Wilton, a mother who returns to lucidity after a long bout with dementia, mm -hmm. just in time to help her children get their lives back together. Looks like a heartwarming and ultimately completely heartbreaking look at a family and the memories we have with the people we love. Uh, okay, I'm gonna cry talking about it. Uh, yeah, go look at it. It looks good. It looks like a good movie. Um, it's gonna shatter my heart into a thousand pieces. Um, so, yeah, those are the ones that have come I was, out. I was looking for tissues, but there were not any on deck. Oh, here you go. Buddy. It's a nap. <laughs> it's close enough. It wipes up the tears. You just need something absorbent. Um, uh, in terms of movies that we've already talked about from other podcasts, uh, from Packcast 39, Eternals comes to Disney Plus on Wednesday, January 12th. If you missed it in theaters like Jacob and my mom, you can see it on Disney Plus. 
it's worth a watch. The Tragedy of Macbeth, which we just talked about from Podcast 45, comes to Apple TV Plus on Friday, January 14th, so go watch that. And The Tender Bar, which we talked about on Podcast 44, comes to Prime Video on Monday, January 17th. There are some new movies coming out this coming week in the theaters that I think you should check out, and I will go through those now. First of the new ones releasing this week is a documentary called Dawn Raid, directed by Oscar Kayetli. Uh, Dawn Raid tells the story of New Zealand music label Dawn Raid Entertainment and how a couple of kids from the lower class were able to form a hip-hop label and the insanity that took place uh, during their rise to fame. I had never heard of Dawn Raid, but I definitely want to check them Same. out after the trailer for this documentary. They were apparently like opening for Beyonce and Jay-Z and Wu-Tang. Dawn Raid? Yeah, in New Zealand. They were like this huge hip-hop group that blew up these kids that just decided to start making music together. Um... So yeah, that one looks really cool. From documentary, we move to anime. Uh, Jacob and I were talking about Miyazaki and his films the other day, mm -hmm. and this next one has me getting those vibes. Jeremy, I think you'll also like this. From director Mamoru Hosida, uh, the director of Samurai Champloo, which I know you loved. So I'm uh, gonna love me some Samurai Champloo. Belle is a story of a shy girl who creates an online avatar named Belle, who becomes a pop superstar before being met by... The Beast. Oh! Beauty and the Beast meets The Matrix? Oh, Looks man. like it could be really cool. I'm Tail definitely interested. Time. <laughs> In the internet. Nice. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it looks, it looks cool. Uh, the next two I'm going to go through quicker than quick because you've probably seen them if you're watching an entertainment podcast because they're the two real like nationwide releases coming out this week. Uh, Scream! Ah! comes out this week. The fifth installment of the series finds our original survivors 25 years later having to survive <laughs> Ghostface yet again. From the directors of Ready or Not and VHS, Scream is going to have thrills, a bit of humor, but mostly a lot of stabbing. You know Scream. I like, there's a there's a particular Scream poster that's like, the killer is on, on the poster, poster and it's and the I'm whole like, cast. nice. I like that. I think it's you. Yeah. No, I think it's, it's you. you. I mean, that's always the fun with Scream, is we get rid of one of the most famous people at the beginning of the movie, that's going to be Jenny Ortega. They've revealed it in the trailer that she's the Drew Barrymore of this movie. Mm -hmm. And then we move on to like, who's the killer? Uh, alongside Scream, on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, is Ho Hotel Transylvania Transformania. What a name. The fourth of the series. Who's the guy that came up with the name for this movie? <laughs> I've got it. Hotel Transylvania, Transylvania Transformania. Transformania. <laughs> uh, directed by Derek Dryman and Jennifer Kluska. Uh, this movie finds our monsters being turned into humans by a strange device made by Van Helsing. Oh. Uh, hijinks are sure to ensue as they attempt to get changed back. And up. the one human character gets changed, changed into, into a monster. monster. A fun Whoa. movie for the whole family. Andy Samberg, Selena Gomez. It's it's a good time. Adam Sandler. Yes, Adam Sandler, also in it. Uh, sticking with animation, we have Riverdance, the animated adventure. Oh, phew. I thought that said Riverdale for a second. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. A sky cinema movie directed by Eamon Butler and Dave Rosenbaum. This looks like a fun animated movie about dance, and you know what? Sometimes that's just what you need. You just need to watch. Like Fantasia, but for like modern dance? Yeah, little, this... little river dance stuff going on. They okay. need to bring the water back, and they need to fight the, the hunter. Robot. Yeah, it's it's one of those like... It's an animated movie. You know it's going to be fun. Okay. Uh, all right, this next one I'm excited for because it's got a lot of actors that I'm really interested in. Uh, Shattered, from Spanish director Luis Prieto, follows Cameron Monaghan as Chris, a rich divorcee who falls in love with a mysterious woman who tries to ruin his life. Also featuring Frank Grillo, who I love in what looks like another deliciously devilish role, and John Malkovich doing what he does best, being himself. Nice. I'm definitely going to be curling up and turning on this action thriller this week. I love the actors. I think it looks fun. Uh, you know, I'm always in for a good time. Your, your titties popping out. Oops. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. You're welcome. I, I knew that in editing you would notice that and be like, why did no one tell me about this? <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, Those YouTube censors are going to kill us this week. They're going to be mad. We're going to get so many claims. Oh Moving right along. I got to shout out Cool Looking Horror when I see it. And the moment Sean Ashmore hits my screen, I know it's going to be good. The man does not miss at playing horrible people. And this looks like another pass uh, at it. 
Uh, so this is a movie about a woman who may or may not have tried to take her own life. She has to pick up the pieces of what's happening in her house with her very overbearing husband, played by Sean Ashmore. It looks like a psychological thriller about what we remember and what we don't, directed by Adam Stilwell and written by Ken Harper. It looks beautifully shot, so I have hope that it'll be exciting. Uh, I, I am worried whenever I see horror that looks good that I'm not going to like it in the end, so I'm hopeful that this is going to be good. I do like Sean Ashmore. Yeah, he's, he's really good. Yeah. He's good at playing bad people. And I don't, he seems so sweet. And then I watch him on screen and I'm like, you just seem What, what other things does he play where he's a bad person? Because I feel like I know him from X-Men, where he was a good guy. Iceman, yeah. And Quantic Break, because I was about to do what you do, where he also plays the protagonist. Uh, he did some stuff this past year that was a lot of like husband who doesn't believe his wife when she says the house is haunted mm, kind of classic. that yeah that like you're crazy honey the house is fine but he's good at that like intense yeah. i am right you are wrong which he did back in x-men okay. um yeah. all right yeah this next one mama bruner is actually excited for shout out to mama bruner and jacob i think we might have fun with this as you've been watching a lot of master chef Okay. Delicious is the story of the man who opened France's first restaurant on the eve of the French Revolution. A story of who gets to decide what is good food and what is not. This food slash revolution tale looks exciting and delicious. Uh, I'm always into a good food movie, and this looks like it looks like a whole movie about like why should the rich decide what good food is and what bad food is? Everyone should be able to have good food. It shouldn't matter what. Yeah, you're doing in anyone can cook. Anyone can. cook. Next, uh, this week's entry for Apocalypse Movie that looks good, but I'm definitely not mentally okay to watch. The Pink Cloud, directed and written by female Brazilian filmmaker Yule Gerbazi, is the tale of a woman who's stuck inside with a man she just met for years after a pink cloud causes humanity to lock down. Mm. I cannot handle any more pandemic movies after these last two years, but I wanted to shout it out because the acting looks really good. And it was written pre-pandemic, so that's always interesting. It was written back in 2017 and shot in 2019. Uh, so it could be good. Um, Whereas our lockdown has lasted two years, theirs looks to last at least five. Um, and our lockdown didn't even last two years. Theirs no. is like you step outside and you die. Mm. It's like you cannot leave your home, uh, which would have been even worse than what we dealt with. So I uh, don't know if I can watch that yet, but I will definitely try and watch it at some point. Our final narrative film for the week. An indie from director Adam Leon and starring Vanessa Kirby, who I absolutely love. Italian Studies tells the story of a writer who's lost her memory and is attempting to find her way home. It looks beautifully shot and acted. I'm so here for it. I think Vanessa Kirby is super talented. And this just looks like a really interesting character movie. I really like dramas that are just about people talking, and this looks like that. So super into it. Back to documentary for the final two movies of the week. First up, lawyer Jeffrey Robinson teams up with sister duo Emily and Sarah Kunstler, who bring Who We Are, A Chronicle of Racism in America. An intense look at the way our country was founded and molded by racism over the years. It looks incredibly powerful and definitely something that everyone should check out. Uh, it looks like a mix of interview and lecture and... Like TED Talk, yeah. but like... Inter more like... TED Talk kind of interspersed with real time, interspersed Interviews, with interview. Yeah. yeah. It's very much that idea of like, if we don't educate those who don't want to be educated, no one will. Yeah. And then they'll just stay uneducated. Uh, uh, sorry. Jeffrey says something, Jeffrey Robinson says something really interesting in the trailer, which is like, I don't think he's going to change, but if I don't try, I know he won't. Mm. And that's something Boom. that I think we really have had to wrestle with particularly our generation in terms of like how much work we have to do going forward. Finally, a movie that according to IndieWire is a story the NYPD doesn't want you to see. A cops and robbers story tells the tale of a police officer in New York whose past as a gang member is revealed 21 years into his career. Directed by Ilinka Kaluga Renault. As a native New Yorker, I've got to watch it. I think you should too. I think this is a really interesting story about how your past can catch up to you, but also how your past doesn't define you, yeah. but how it can define you and influence how you behave going forward. It's just super interesting to see someone who is 
figuratively lived on both sides of the tracks mm, yeah. and how they move through the world. Right. I think it looks like a really cool, Sounds really interesting, interesting story. Yeah. Uh, so I'm definitely interested in seeing this. If there's anything y'all are interested in seeing this week that you think we should check out, let us know. Those are the movies that have come out and are coming out. I'm so excited to hear what you guys think. Let us know if you're seeing anything. Tag Black Wolves if you go to the cinema this week. We would love to know that we're supporting people going out, catching some movies, buying some A-list, getting those three free movies a week. Doing the thing. We are not sponsored by AMC. No, we're no. not, but we yes. should be. Huh? <laughs> we all have a list. I convinced them to get it so we could go see more movies. We got it, and we're we seeing got, more movies. Yep, we we've got. already seen. We've. I've seen one movie. You've seen one this week. We've seen two. I've seen one. Tragedy and Macbeth and West Side Story. Well, we saw. That was last week. I saw the West Side Story again this week. You As saw West Side Story again this week. We've all yeah. seen at least one movie this week. Yeah. Yes. And we all... And we still have to see The Matrix. We still, we still haven't seen, seen The Matrix. Yeah. We still haven't seen The Matrix. We still haven't seen... Oh my gosh. Sing 2. There's a, there's a giant list. Shut up. We're not things. seeing it. <laughs> I don't want to see Sing 2. So why did you say Jeremy, we know it's you want to see Sing joke. 2. It's fine. It's, good. it's called a joke. <laughs> it's called a joke. Jacob. I'm just, I'm trying to go. I'd love That's to see Cyrano. Yeah, we still have to see Cyrano. Uh, which which isn't widely released yet. So it's still selected theaters, I think. Right. I think so, as well, yeah. so I do want to see Cyrano. Yeah. I, I have, have I have a like whole list of all the movies that came out. Oh, here it is. Uh, we still haven't seen Ghostbusters. I still haven't seen yeah. House of Gucci. Oh, yeah. French Dispatch. Oh, Belfast. French Dispatch is already on Blu-ray. Don't like, Look uh, Up. King Richard. Power of the Dog. Last Duel. Yeah. None of these movies are in theaters. Anymore. I know, but there's so much stuff that we talked about. <laughs> I still I haven't seen Eternals. Eternals. You still haven't <laughs> seen Eternals. I'll well, see if they're only showing it at one time at night in 42nd Street. Yeah. Let's just watch it on Disney Plus. I, mean, I kind of want to go out there, there you know. know? Yeah. Do you think go tonight? as someone who saw oh, I was going to say as someone who saw The Eternals do you think it's one of those that has to be seen in the theaters? I ask that because I watched Captain Marvel again the other day with my mom and there was no point that I was like man I really feel like you're missing out because you're not seeing this in theaters. It was like no it's still it's still cool on I a small screen. I think there are some cool moments that really feel cool when you're in that scale oh, of the screen. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Oh, man. You're but right. I also think you could watch it at home and yeah. have a great time with it. All right. We'll see what comes first, January 12th or me seeing it in the theaters. We'll tell you next week. On the podcast. That's all the movies coming out this yeah. week. Yeah. I moved quick. <laughs> that was quicker than normal, it felt. Yeah. Are we going to dare to dip our toe into the content we're consuming? Yes, of course we can Absolutely. dip our toes All in right, there. let's you wanna do it. You want to kick us off, Mr. Transition? Yeah, kick us off, Mr. All Transition. All right. Um, um, so punch, but okay. It was a kick. You didn't see it. It was under the table. Uh, um, so, I've been watching MasterChef. I've also... I've also been. Have you? I don't know. I've also been. Really? You of all people watching MasterChef? I started um, the Book of Boba with you guys. I like it. I like it. Logan stays quiet because Logan's. I didn't say anything. No, I like it. No, I know. Just remember, you like it. We all watch yeah. Book of Boba we together. Watch there were some who wanted to continue and some who who were tapping out. I'd start. watch more. I'd watch more. I think I'm interested to see What that. else have I been watching, Logan? Uh, we watched a couple movies recently. We watched Freddy Player One together. Yeah. you already seen that. Yeah. We watched Encanto. We did watch Encanto. Encanto. Yeah. You've been obsessed with it since then. Mm, I've not been obsessed, but I like it. I know. You were seeing it when I came in today. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> we watched the original Matrix again. Yeah. 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 I like a cup. Yeah. You were watching Ink Master for a little while? I was, but I'm not anymore. Kind of elf? Yeah. Still playing Cyberpunk. Good game. Yeah! I got F1 2021. Yeah! So, yeah, yeah. I installed that. Haven't played it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. And, um, That's it. That's, That's it. it. You? Reading? You reading anything? Nope. You? Okay. 
Uh, <laughs> y- you go, because I, I have to look at my music. I've been listening to a lot of music, and I want to shout all the albums out. So. I, I have some music to shout out, so when oh, you're on your thing, I'll pull up my music. But for now, uh, Encanto is great. Yeah. It's so good. Um, we don't talk about Bruno. It's but! Stuck in my head. <laughs> stuck in my head. Um, I've watched Ready Player One this week. I watched... Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, I rewatched with my oh, mom. Oh, same. I, I rewatched it, too. Yeah, it's a cute movie. Yeah. Rewatched West Side Story, great movie. I've been watching... Uh, I just finished the latest season of The Great British Baking Show, which was super cute. I'm watching The Witcher. I'm watching Station Eleven on HBO, which is very good. I'm watching... What else am I watching? Yeah, I know, right? Right? Two um, weeks worth of things to catch. Podcasts. Yeah. Catch the viewers up on. Podcasts. I talked about Mother Android on yeah, the last podcast. Yeah. Yeah? yeah, Cool. Yeah. Mother Android, worth seeing. Don't believe the reviews. They're wrong. Um, I'm so mad at the reviewers of that movie. Sidebar. Just because a movie is not the movie you thought it was going to be does not make it a bad movie. Watch the movie that it is. Podcasts. I finished season one of Unsleeping City. I'm listening to Adventure Academy. I'm listening to Not Another D&D Podcast. I'm listening to the Packcast, because it's great. Because it's great. Uh, and then music. I'll go really quick, because I know I don't have a lot. Um, Gus Burney released her new single, Mountain Man, Fire. Gus Burney, you're a legend. Uh... And then I've been listening to the music from Encanto. Um, so all very good stuff. All very exciting. Uh, other than that, not really watching. I'm trying to watch more movies. So I'm going to keep people posted Got on a those. long list. We, we have a long list to get through. Um, I want to start Arcane this week. Because it's only one season. Yeah. And it's a, I just want to get through a Half quick watch. Half hour episodes. Yeah. You can binge it real easy. I'm thinking about starting Cobra Kai. Because everyone says I'd really like it but I've never really been huge into Karate Kid, mm. so I don't know if I'm going to love it, but I do want to give it a mm. shot, because I do like action movies. I like that kind of karate mm. fight yeah, thing. like karate and, drama. Yeah, so yeah. I, I feel like I could be into it. Okay. Um, trying to think if anything else has come out that I really wanted to watch or that I think we should watch. Um, no, I think that's it. That's it for the content that I've been... Oh, video games. Sorry, totally forgot video games. I'm playing Persona 5 Strikers, which is good. I'm playing Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memories, which is good. I'm playing F1 2021. Jeremy and I are racing on Team McLaren. Getting excited for Season 4 of Drive to Survive and next season of F1. Only two months until our first Grand Prix. Uh, and in terms of video gaming, that... Oh, and I'm finishing up Control, which is a game I've been playing yeah. for a while. But I absolutely love. I've gotten so much into it. I've and got, you got all that DLC to go through, too. Yes, I do. I've got a bunch of ideas as, like, a creative about Control. So, uh, yeah, I'm very... Hey, Remedy, if you watch our podcast, maybe hit me up. I've got some things I'd love to talk to you about. Yeah? Yeah? Jeremy? Okay. Uh, I'm going to start with video games. I beat the first Mass Effect. Uh, and I started playing Mass Effect 2. I'm still playing Tales of Arise. I started... Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. I started Returnal, uh, which is... Bless you. Thank you. Uh, super addictive. Like, that's like a one more try, like, constantly type of game. Love those. Um... Playing, still playing Alan Wake Remastered, playing oh, Persona 5 Strikers, so playing, playing F1 2021. Uh, I have a team with Logan uh, and a team with a collective member, Michael Jorge. We, the two of us, are racing for Ferrari. Is that what we're racing for? I think so, yeah. Sure. Um, I think me and him are on Aston Martin. Uh, what else? What else? Let's just say that's it for video games for now. Um, in terms of things I'm watching, I finished Super Crooks, and then I decided that I was going to take a little break from anime, and I finally, finally, after after several times of watching the first episode, Before finally got hooked into Succession. I've been binging it basically every day for the last week and a half. I'm watching it primarily in the morning because who doesn't like skinless business decisions with your coffee and toast? Um, So I'm in the middle of season two uh, and I'm liking it a lot. Uh, 
in terms of movies, saw Tragedy and Macbeth, and that's really it. Fire movies Man. that I saw in theater and Spider Man No Way Home and in Um And music, I'm listening to uh, the new Roddy Rich album, Live Life Fast. Mm. Uh, listening to the new Alicia Keys album, mm. Keys. A very interesting uh, double album in which the first half is produced by Alicia Keys, and then the second half are the same songs from the first half, but produced by Mike Will Made It. Wow. So, very okay. cool concept, and it, like, you know, I, was, I thought at first, I was like, maybe I don't want to listen to, like, this song again, but then it happened, and I was like, oh, this is actually a different vibe. I'm actually kind of yeah, fucking with totally this. Totally different vibe, but same stems or different stems, too? Sometimes different, usually the same vocal stems, uh, but sometimes it's different instrumental stems, or sometimes it's more of like a remix, or sometimes it's very like, you know, it's just like adding like a little bit of like more of a hip hop flair. It's really interesting. Sure. I think you should give it a listen. Yeah. I think you'd like it. Yeah. Um, I've also, I also listened to the new Nas album, Magic, um, and by the time this podcast comes out, I will be totally obsessed with this new album by The Weeknd, Don FM. Okay. Very excited. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. That's yeah. what I've been consuming. Wow. Woo! We did that it! Is. And with that, the First Black Wolves have gotten another episode of the yeah. podcast yeah. under their belt for the new year. Thank you, Anchor, for sponsoring us. We love you. We love you. Tune in next week for more podcasts. Yeah. Ooh. On Apple Music, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, yeah. and wherever you get your Anything. podcasts. Or YouTube. And obviously on YouTube. Why don't you yeah. leave a like and a comment down below, sis and bro? Come on. Thanks. Show, sib. Show some love, sib. Yeah. <laughs> Gender neutral sib. Yeah. I like that. Um, yeah. Is that, is that it? Do we have any closing remarks? I think that's it. That's it, God. That's it. All right, well. You know me, I'm Jeremy Mansoirs. You know me, I'm Jacob Wade. You know me, I'm Logan Riley Bruner. And, uh... Parting is such sweet sorrow, so I shall say goodnight till it be morrow. There it is, guys. Think about it. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Bye! Bye! Bye. Jesus Christ. <laughs>